The English army took up a position on a hill between the villages of Cressy and Wadiker, with an army of about 12,000 men. The king divided the army into three battles, with the right flank occupied by the Prince of Wales, son of the king. At the time, he was only 16 years old and was effectively commanded by the Earl of Warwick. Under his command were about 3,000 archers and 2,000 knights with spearmen. The left flank was commanded by the Earl of Northampton and the Earl of Arundel, and this battle was slightly smaller, numbering about 3,000 archers and 2,000 knights with spearmen. Behind him stood a reserve, commanded by King Edward himself with about 900 men. It is likely that three bombs were placed in the center. The English army waiting for the French had wasted no time, and the soldiers had dug horse pits on the slope of the hill and plunged several rows of stakes in front of it. The method of building archers is still controversial. The modern describes their deployment as a construction of a harrow. Most likely he meant the placement of the shooters in a chess order to make them more comfortable to shoot. Edward ordered the knights to dismount and send their horses to the camp which was a delicate tactical decision. Now the archers knew exactly that the knights would not abandon them, and with them, shoulder to shoulder, the heir to the throne would fight. Philip VI's advance party, after a long journey in hot weather, approached Cressy around 4 p.m. In the distance, there was a thunderstorm, and rain clouds were coming. Ahead of them were Genoese crossbowmen. Some sources report that their number was about 6,000. This figure is most likely greatly exaggerated. These are all crossbowmen who were in the service of the French king. Many were sent to strengthen the garrisons of cities and fortresses. Together with the Genoese went the Battle of the Earl of Alençon, the brother of the king, and the Battle of John of Bohemia. Only about 3,000 heavily armed horsemen, the rest of the army marched behind, stretching for tens of kilometers. The day was coming to an end, and Philip VI decided to postpone the battle to the next day, to pull up the whole army and give the troops rest after a tedious transition. But the knights were hard to hold, seeing in front of them the hated Englishmen with whom the French had longed to fight for so long, the army rushed into battle. John of Bohemia and the king's brother, the Count of Valius, began to press Philip to send crossbowmen forward and then throw the knights at the enemy. At about five o'clock, the crossbowmen were ordered to launch an attack. At this time of year, the sun sets at about half past seven and the Genoese crossbowmen, being professional soldiers, believed that no one would start a battle two hours before sunset. They left their shields and bolts at the baggage station, and the commander tried to challenge the order, but no one listened. The crossbowers had no choice but to attack the superior enemy, and it started to rain at that time. Often you can hear cunning archers hiding the bowstring under their helmets, and the foolish crossbowmen didn't think to do it, and their weapons went out of action. But the Genoese were highly professional and well-paid soldiers, from whom one could hardly expect such foolishness. The rain quickly ended, and the crossbowmen continued to move. Coming to a suitable distance, they began to shoot. The English responded with a barrage of arrows. The speed of the bow was two or three times higher. Besides, the archers were two and a half thousand bolts. The crossbowmen received 16,000 arrows in return. Unable to hide behind their shields, the Genoese began to retreat. Having seen the defeat of their mercen, the French command became enraged. The Earl of Alençon said the famous phrase, Go! Trample this scum! It prevents us to attack! And the battle of the brother of the king has moved on the enemy, directly through the retreating crossbowmen. In this attack, took part in King Philip VI. Many authors write about the strong mud in which horses were allegedly knitted, but it was a short rain after the hot weather, so the dry soil did not have time to soak enough. The English archers threw a shower of arrows at the attacking knights in the 30 seconds it took the horsemen to cross the shutout space. Most of all the horses were injured. Many fell dead. At the end of the way, the rider had to overcome the obstacles from the stakes. All these factors 
did not allow heavily armed cavalry to strike with a dense monolithic mass. Knights in small groups rode into a cohesive formation of English infantry and died in hand to hand. Here the king's brother, the Earl of Alençon, was killed and the king was wounded. As a result, seeing no chance of success, the remnants of the knights rushed back, showered with a hail of arrows. At this time, the Battle of John of Bohemia was being prepared for the attack. John was blind and ordered to tie his horse to the horses of the squires. Where's my son? asked the Czech king. He fights in the Battle of the King of France, answered him. Since I am blind, I ask you to lead me as far as possible in the very thick of battle so that I can cross my sword with anyone. The detachment of John of Bohemia moved forward. The Czech and German knights, spurring their horses, shouted, Prague! and rushed into battle. The unsuccessful first attack prepared the ground for the second wave. Pits became visible. Some of the stakes were broken. Under a hail of arrows, the Battle of John fell upon the English. A heavy hand-to-hand -hand battle ensued. The Czech knights, scattered their personal guard, reached the Prince of Wales. He fell twice under the blows of the enemy, and his banner-bearer had to throw the standard on the ground and put his feet on it. Fighting off the attacker, he cried out, In the name of Edward and St. George, all to the son of the king! At this difficult moment, a detachment of English knights rushed to the prince's aid so that the wounded heir to the throne got a respite, and the banner rose again above the detachment. During this fight, Edward was told that his son was in danger. And that he had died? asked the king. No, he fights was the answer. Let him fight. Do not interfere with the boy's urn spurs, the king quietly replied. Despite the bravery of the warriors, John's battle failed, and the blind king of Bohemia was killed along with his henchmen. Edward forbade the taking of prisoners. The English soldiers spared no one, even the king of fabulously rich Bohemia, from which up to 40% of the silver came to Europe. Unable to break through the British front, the Czech and German knights were forced to retreat. Then, they began to pull up to the battlefield in small groups of 200-300 horsemen, the rest of the French army. They immediately bravely attacked superior enemy forces, and most of them were killed in action. A total of 16 attacks were made before sunset. Four horses were killed under the king, and Philip himself was wounded twice. About 8 o'clock in the evening, it was pitch black. The disorganized army was in disarray. No one understood where the king, the battles mingled, and could not find their commanders, many of whom were killed, and the misled French army began to scatter. The king of France was eager to fight, but his entourage, realizing that this was not possible, took Philip from the battlefield by force. The English, not knowing what the enemy was going to do and how large Edward III had ordered his army to stay in place, he came to his son, hugged him, and praised him for his steadfastness. All night, the soldiers burned fires waiting for the dawn. Some sources say that the English had launched a counterattack, but this is very unlikely, because all the actions had to be organized in complete darkness. The squires had to be sent to the camp to find and bring the horse, find your knight, build and organize a battle, then attack across a field strewn with traps and corpses of men and horses. The rising sun illuminated the surroundings, and Edward was sure that the French had gone and ordered a tour of the battlefield. The slope of the hill was strewn with dead horses and corpses of men. The army of Philip VI lost about one and a half thousand horsemen and about 300 crossbowmen. Losses among the commanders were simply terrifying. Thirteen dukes and counts were lost, as well as the king of Bohemia, the marshal and constable were killed. Eighteen knights of the banner commanders of the detachment, that is. The army was almost beheaded. The British lost 150 men-at-arms and an unknown number of ordinary soldiers. The day after the battle, unsuspecting stragglers of French infantry approached the battlefield 
and the British beat them as well. The main reason for the defeat of the French army was weak command of the troops. King Philip VI, undoubtedly being a brave knight, did not have the necessary leadership qualities that were so important for managing an undisciplined medieval knight army. His opponent Edward III not only had tactical talents, but also had a very high authority among his knights. Besides the backbone of the English, the army passed the combat coordination in the war against the Scots and many knights, archers, spearmen used to fight together and knew each other well. As a result, having won the battle, Edward III captured part of Normandy and managed to hold it.